Hello class, it's our last week and what a journey it has been. This week we are talking about the problem of the human scale and how it factors into a government's ability to effectively operate and meet the needs of its population. First, it's not the job of the government to meet the needs of a population. It is up to the individual to make sure their own needs are met. When we talk about the problems of government and the human scale, the one factor that sticks out to me the most and is the population of the U.S. and how much it has grown since our nation was founded. If we take Aristotle's definition of a republic, it should be small. The maximum size of a republic should be around 30,000 30, people. A republic could be bigger according to Athelius if it is developed into a federation, and that federation should be of medium size. And according to Dr. Don Levinston, what size that should roughly be should be about half the size of South Carolina. According to David Hume, republics are the best form of government, but can be overrun by large governments. So to avoid that, they should be federated, and the max size should be about the size of Great Britain. When our nation was founded, we had a very sparse population. The biggest city was Philadelphia, which had roughly about 30,000 people. This made the idea of a Republican government easy to formulate. Break the country into states. They had their own state governments that essentially took care of themselves, you know, their taxes, things that need to be paid for, uh, commerce and such. And had a very limited central government, which basically watched over the states to protect them in case of war. They watched over international uh, trades. Um, they worked with other countries to form alliances in case war broke out, so on and so forth. Um, and as the country grew, new lands were acquired, and those lands were divided into even more states. Some states that were, that were becoming too big would secede and form two states. For example, Maine seceded from Massachusetts to form a new state. And by the 1850s, the U.S. was now coast to coast, from the Atlantic to the Pacific. This is a vast amount of land, and during this time, many people thought that the U.S. was getting, too, getting or was too big and on the verge of becoming an empire. Uh, many people, including Thomas Jefferson, thought that at some point the U.S. would become three different federations. It would be broken up into three parts. You had the Atlantic Federation, the Mississippi Federation, and a Pacific Federation. Now let's fast forward into present day. None of those things that they predicted came to fruition. Uh, we have a country that is made up of 50 states with a population that, that just continues to grow. In some states, that population grows faster than populations in other states. Um, you have states like California, states like New York, Florida, wh whose population seems to seems to grow a lot faster than some of the states out in the Midwest. You know, Idaho, North and South Ca uh, Dakota. Um, you know, some of those uh, central states. You know, where there's a lot of farmland and it's just a wide open country. It seem, but it seems to me that the lower populated states are economically and politically do better than the larger, larger populated states. In California, for an example, uh, there was a proposal in 2008, 2018 to divide uh, the state into three separate states. The population had gotten so large in some parts, other areas of the state that had a smaller population and may thought and they thought different politically were sick and tired of the largely populated areas making their decisions. Um, so basically their vote essentially didn't count because the bigger cities uh, with high populated areas were making the decisions for the lessly populated areas, the more rural areas. Um, and th this is uh, where I think our biggest issue is with the human scale and government is because our population continues to grow. And according to Aristotle, Athesius, and Hume, 
to be an effective republic, we must remain small. If a republic gets too large, it turns into an empire, and then comes along corruption and tyranny. And I will leave you with these final questions. Has the U.S. grown too big to be a republic? Should we start trying to develop the U.S. into smaller federations to keep our republic alive? Or should we move on to more of a Hosbian type of government, which, honestly, I really think is what is in place and it's getting worse, um, but to have a big, strong central government who decides everything for us and controls all of the United States and the individual states themselves has little to no say. Uh, thank you all for watching. I look forward to reading your responses. Best of luck to you all in your future classes. Have a great week. Bye.